How's it going, you all? And welcome back to Be Bros. The sequel trilogy started with a mediocre movie with some potential, continued with a piece that aimed to destroy the legacy of the franchise we love, and ended with a failure. The core Star Wars fans that have seen the movies before 2015, the terrible year that started all this, agree upon the fact that the sequels are nothing but a disappointment at the least. The ratings and their views tell that they aren't quality movies, the box office results show they aren't the financial gem. Maybe The Force Awakens was a success, but it was a Star Wars movie after 10 years and it continued the story after 38 years. It was going to be a success no matter what. Wherever we look at the sequels from, we can see that Disney failed. We watched them fail over and over again for 4 years with the sequel trilogy, knowing that it had to continue as they had to finish what they have started. During those four years, Disney had to promote the movies, sell merchandise, decorate their beloved lands and worlds with sequel content. Show the world that what they are doing is the best piece of artwork. We understood as fans. We went to every movie with hope. As Star Wars fans, the least we can do is to hope. But we saw in 2019, after Rise of Skywalker, that the sequel trilogy is just trash. What do you do with trash? You throw it away. Yet we can see that Disney continue to, Lucasfilm continues to promote and make content from this train wreck of a trilogy instead of accepting failure and go back to the old ways, the originals, the TV shows, the prequels. They insist on and force people to be a part of this mess. Unfortunately, this shows that they like the content they have produced and regardless how the people who love Star Wars react, they continue to develop more projects involving the sequels. Let us give you a list of contents they have produced over the last few years after 2019 and that they will produce after today that involves the sequel trilogy instead of other Star Wars content. Our concern about this started when we visited the Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland in 2019. We obviously didn't like the sequel trilogy, but knew there were a lot of content about it around. We had to accept it. First Order Troopers marching, Resistance theme playing, Rays walking around taking pictures with the fans. We even accepted the new Millennium Falcon with its sequel's appearance. However, there is a line that cannot be crossed. Anakin Skywalker. We went to buy a couple of lightsabers to have a nice memory of the place. Of course, we would like to get the iconic lightsaber, Anakin's then Luke's lightsaber. However, we only got to see Rey's lightsaber, no Anakin. We are aware of the fact that Rey's version of Anakin's lightsaber is different. There's a leather part in the middle. After it was separated from the middle in The Last Jedi, Rey patched it. So we would be okay for that to be identified with Rey, even though the crystal says otherwise. What we couldn't understand was why there isn't a lightsaber for the chosen one. After walking out of the shop, we started paying more attention. There is no content related to Anakin Skywalker anywhere. It is like they are trying to delete him and his image. This is an extremely personal and somewhat a small event, but it is important to point out. However, there are greater concerns. The Lego Star Wars The Holiday Special. Sequel characters once again as the leads. Even though there is no story arc, they choose to use Rey's, Poe's and Finn's as the leads. Even worse than that, they make fun of the characters we love. Darth Vader was like a puppy of the Emperor, Luke was a stupid young boy and Obi-Wan was used just to say hello there. It is mind blowing to us that Disney can go out of their way to demean the icons of Star Wars to make the characters they created useful. There is another LEGO Star Wars project for Halloween, Terrifying Tales. We will watch the Sith in action throughout history and guess who stars on this show, Poe Dameron. What kind of connection does he have with the Sith? Why wouldn't they pick a character who's remotely related to the dark side? We heard that the Emperor will once again make an appearance. Will Paul repeat his somewhat Palpatine returned? Is this the new kind of comedy that Lucasfilm produces? 
Disney World has a massive new project involving Star Wars, Star Wars The Galactic Star Cruiser. It genuinely looks to be the ultimate Star Wars experience and we cannot wait to have a stay there after it launches in 2022. But we are a little concerned with some of the terminology used on the website and fear it will be a sequel promotion once again. Will you follow the rule of the First Order or join the Resistance in a secret plot? This is right from the main website of the Galaxy Star Cruiser and on the first page we get asked this question. Well I have a better one. Why not use the Empire and the Rebellion? Why not take advantage of the part of Star Wars that is already a legend? As we are mentioning it constantly, the sequels have failed and it is undeniable that they are far, far behind the originals. Disney and Lucasfilm no longer has to force the sequels to the fans as that chapter is now over. There are 10,000s of years of Star Wars history and there are so many untold stories across all eras. 45,000 BBY and the Jedi's creation, 35,000 BBY and the Jedi Order vs the Rakuten Empire, 5,000 BBY and the Golden Age of the Sith, 4,000 BBY and the Mandalorian Wars, after a few centuries later the Jedi Civil War, a few centuries later than that the fight against the Eternal Empire. All these periods are filled with untold stories. We don't see the point on insisting on a failed story. Star Wars stories aren't limited to only the Skywalker family and a hundred years. The failed story of the sequels unfortunately is not minding its own business and destroying the legacy of Star Wars, especially The Last Jedi but all the sequels hurts the legend that is Star Wars. Han, Leia and especially Luke's journey and their characters are shattered thanks to the sequels. The New Republic is corrupt just like the Old Republic. The Jedi are blind as always and Luke is a failed master like all the masters on the Jedi Council. It is as if nothing in the original trilogy took place, but this is no new information. Star Wars fans hate the sequels not because they are only bad stories, but because it affects our original stories. Unfortunately, not only the movies, but the efforts to justify those movies hurt Star Wars deeply at the moment. We don't know how devoted you are to the comics, but there are canon stories that are being told there and one of them is the Darth Vader comics. It takes place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. We get to see Vader's journey between the two movies and honestly it is hard to predict where it is going right now. Once the issues are complete, maybe there will be a clearer picture. The reason why we refer to the comics is because of its connection to Rise of Skywalker. Darth Vader travels to Exegol, finds the Sith fleet, the planet killing Star Destroyers. Apparently the power of the Death Star was always in the hands of the Empire but they chose not to use it and for what reason. We were asking the question how did this fleet happen to exist watching Rise of Skywalker. To give us an answer elsewhere as they wouldn't in the movie, now they are saying it always existed. Even if you can think of it as a plan of the Emperor, the new question is why didn't Darth Vader tell Luke about Exegol, the Sith fleet and the Emperor's clones? Why did Luke have to travel across the galaxy to pinpoint the location of a Wayfinder that could have been revealed to him on the Death Star? This creates even more plot holes. It is genuinely hard to understand the logic behind so much in this Vader comics. The justification also continues on screen. The Mandalorian tries to explain the cloning experiments that eventually led to Palpatine's return as a force sensitive clone. So far the Mandalorian did nothing to hurt Star Wars, unlike the comics. But it is inevitable that as we connect the previous stories to the sequels, our Star Wars will be hurt. It is extremely hard for a bad story and a good story to merge perfectly and make sense together, especially when the efforts to tie those stories together are done without a clear plan and a vision. Disney bought Star Wars in 2012. They made radical changes to the franchise and one of the biggest ones is the removal of the extended universe known as Legends today. We weren't introduced to the extended universe back then and never thought the removal of it would have such dire changes. All the Old Republic content, stories between movies and the legacies after the return of the Jedi are all gone and they are replaced with the worst. 
It will be the 10th anniversary of Lucasfilm's addition to Disney next year. And even though there have been incredible additions to the Star Wars galaxy like Star Wars Rebels, The Mandalorian and Rogue One, we are behind where we were back then. Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy brought their ideas and projects to create the future of Star Wars and in search for gold, they lost diamonds in the process. Instead of building on the legacy of George Lucas, just like Dave Floney does right now, instead of using the complete characters from comics, video games, movies and TV shows, they chose to create their own characters and destroy all that has been already built. After failing so spectacularly, Disney's obsession over the sequels they created continues, and Star Wars continues to suffer from the wound that may never heal with this mindset and lack of vision. You have paid the price for your lack of vision. Ah!